the mid-1930s, with the Great Depression in full swing, it was no surprise that the acquisition of new tanks was not exactly an army's first priority. It should also not be surprising that some entrepreneurial fellows believed that they saw a gap in the arms market, a demand for a tank on the cheap for the army on a tight budget. How did these men go about such a feat? By sticking some armor onto a tractor and calling it a tank. It was America's Bob Semple tank, years before the latter's conceptualization. And much like the Bob Semple, it saw about equal success. Only this time, someone actually bought some. Today, we look at the Distin Tractor Tank. Welcome to another Tank Encyclopedia voiced article. I'm your host, Wood, and today I'll be covering the Distin Tractor Tank, a cheap alternative for nations too strapped for cash to afford real tanks. If you like what we do and want to see more of it, don't forget to like the video, and if you haven't already, subscribe so you don't miss a single upload. Exactly who came up with the Distin was a matter of debate. The name of the vehicle came from the Distin Sawworks Company, who apparently assembled the vehicles. However, the idea itself may have originated from the Caterpillar Tractor Company, who allegedly requested Distin create armor sets for tractors. It seems as if Caterpillar may have come up with the concept, but who made the exact design is unknown. For whatever reason, either as designers or manufacturers of the tank, or purely for brand recognition, Distin's name ended up attached to the tanks. The tractors themselves were Caterpillar Model 35s. At some point, a third company, Otto Kafka Incorporated, became involved. The precise nature of their involvement and how they got there was unknown, but they were involved at least in the marketing of the vehicle. An exact timeline is difficult to ascertain, but the vehicle was being promoted as early as January 1934. Thus, it followed, the agreement between Distin and Caterpillar was made in 1933, or earlier, with one prototype constructed. The design itself was not overly complicated. On top of a Model 35 tractor was set a large, boxy armored body. The body was of riveted construction, with a door at the rear alongside an access hatch in the turret. A 37mm gun was mounted in a turret, although for the prototype a simple gun shield was used, alongside a 30 caliber machine gun in the hull. The exact machine gun was unknown, but was likely to have been the commercially available Marlin machine gun. The tractor hull was slightly modified, with a lengthened track assembly, presumably to improve performance. This was a simple case of adding a third road wheel to the assembly and riveting a metal bar to keep it attached. The prototype, and at least one production model vehicle, kept the original short track assembly of the tractor. Armor was pretty light, 6 millimeters at the weakest, and about 8 to 13 millimeters at best. Enough to protect against small arms fire and shrapnel, but little help against dedicated anti-tank weapons. A four-cylinder engine produced 47.5 horsepower, enough to propel the vehicle to speeds of up to 5 to 6.5 miles per hour, or 8 to 10 kilometers per hour. The tank required a crew of three to operate, a commander or gunner, a secondary gunner, and a driver. It could also, allegedly, be used in a transportation role, and in this guise it could carry seven men at six miles per hour. In 1934, the marketing campaign began to try and pitch the tank to foreign governments. The sales team first looked at selling it to Kuwait, and sent a letter to their minister of war. The letter actually ended up in the hands of Sheikha Ahmed al-Jabir al-Sabah, since Kuwait didn't have an equivalent to a minister of war. The letter extolled some of the virtues of the tank, mainly its cost. At $21,000, it was half as expensive as contemporary British light tanks. Its use against enemies across the border for use to quell riots, and the simplicity with which it could be easily restored to an ordinary tractor for peacetime use were also of note. Kuwait didn't bite, but it did attract the attention of a British agent, who reported the sales attempt to Lieutenant Colonel Fole. The agent remarked to Fole that the attempt was, quote, not a very edifying procedure when their government, the USA, is supposed to be taking the leading part in the world today to try and stop the war, unquote. If anything arose out of this minor incident, it seems to have been forgotten. For their next sales attempt, focus turned to Romania, who were attempting to develop their armored corps at the time. In July 1935, Kafka Incorporated proclaimed themselves in a position to supply Romania the latest types of tanks at advantageous prices. Romanian interest in the vehicle was peaked, and in August, the Distin was invited to take part in a tank competition in September. Interest then quickly waned when Kafka informed Romania they would need to buy the tanks. In November, Kafka again attempted to pitch the vehicle, inviting Romanian officials to an all-expense paid trip to the U.S. to view them, although only on the condition that they agree to purchase at least 25 of them. 
Due to the high cost of transporting the tanks and the uncertainty that spare parts would be obtainable during wartime, the offer was again declined. For the Diston, the third time would prove the charm. Exactly how they pitched it this time was unknown, but Afghanistan agreed to purchase a number of vehicles sometime in the mid-30s. Precisely how many were ordered is disputed, with between 9 and 10 being the most commonly cited numbers, although one source suggests as few as three were actually delivered. Afghanistan may have also received a number of additional armor sets, allowing them to convert other domestic tractors without needing to buy them directly from distant. Photographic evidence shows as many as five tanks in Afghan service. The order was shipped and arrived in Karachi in 1935 before being moved via train to Kabul. A literal national holiday was apparently declared upon the delivery of these tanks, and they were paraded through the city. How long these fearsome fighting machines remained in service is not known, but they appear to have been active at least past the Second World War. At some point, a pair of grills were added to the engine compartment, probably to avoid overheating. Perhaps the most surprising about Afghanistan's tractor tanks was that several, if not all of them, appeared to have survived into the 21st century. One was spotted near the former U.S. military base at Darul Aman in 2006. A further three were spotted in a tank graveyard somewhere between Forward Operating Base Scorpion and the Armor Branch School. A final tank was located east of the Armor School near the fence line just before the firing range. The tank at Darul Aman was believed to have previously resided at the National Museum of Afghanistan before its closure in the early 90s. Exactly how many vehicles and where these tanks were varied greatly, depending on when they were spotted. The distance had been spotted intermittently in 2003, 2006, 2011, and 2015. Where these tanks are now is uncertain. They may have remained where they were, or they may have moved since. They may have even been broken down for scrap, finally. Alongside Afghanistan, there are reports that China, New Zealand, Canada, and the U.S. were also offered or operated distance. For both New Zealand and Canada, the offers were declined, although a postcard featuring the Distin would apparently be influential in the design of New Zealand's own homegrown tank, the Bob Semple. Many aspects of the Semple were apparently shared with the Distin, including the lengthened track, the turret and hatch designs, and even the pistol ports. The U.S. Army also turned down the opportunity to buy Distins, although allegedly the Marines briefly operated 16 of them. However, Former curator of the U.S. Armor and Cavalry Museum, Charles Lemons, stated that no photographic evidence of these tanks in USMC service existed, and according to both U.S. Army Center of Military History and Tank Automotive and Armaments Command, no records existed of them either. So it's basically a baseless assumption. China was likewise alleged to have ordered and perhaps operated four of the tanks. One source suggested that the order occurred in 1935, but was canceled, with the tanks being sent to the U.S. Marines. Given that, for whatever reason, the Marines don't want to admit to using this tank, this seems unlikely. Another reports that four distance were built in 1938 and delivered in 39 due to, quote, security concerns. Although the Sutton Skunk, another tractor tank design, had failed to win any orders there in 1932, by 1938 the situation in China was vastly different, and so they may have been more amenable to such designs. However, no credible evidence existed for the tanks marketing to China, and there was a similar lack of photographs of the vehicle in Chinese service. Although China may have received some as late as 1939, serious production and marketing efforts likely concluded in 1937 or soon afterwards. As soon as the global economy recovered and armies could once again look at serious, actual tanks, demand for cheap knockoff conversions fell. While perhaps suitable for nations fighting opponents lacking much in the way of anti-tank equipment, the Distin was, at its heart, still just a tractor with some armor and guns stacked on top. The tank was simply too slow and too vulnerable to even the smallest anti-tank weapons, and not even the cheap cost or ease of conversion back into a tractor could tempt buyers to seriously consider such offers. This concludes another Tank Encyclopedia voiced article. What do you think of these tractor tanks? Would you purchase one? Let us know in the comments below. If you like what we do, don't forget to subscribe and turn notifications on so you don't miss a single video. If you want to support us more directly, consider donating on Patreon or PayPal. All the money goes to help keep the lights on and making bigger and better videos for you guys. Until next time, keep us in your sights.